I think I'm recording. Let me verify. Okay, I'm recording. So don't say anything if you don't want it to be on a recording. <laughs> but you can still ask questions. That's fine. And um, I'm recording, okay? <laughs> so this one I wanted to do because um, this is a binomial situation and I talked about binomial requirements right you want to consider those things but obviously this comes from the binomial assignment so it's going to be binomial but if I'm verifying and you know double checking because technically I should do that later on I might have it come you know mixed up with other probabilities um you know you have a fixed number of trials which in this case 48 violent ay, ay, felons are randomly selected so my sample size or my list is 48, my N, when I talk about binomial notation. And I, I've been stressing a lot when we get to word problems <clears throat> to like, you might want to read it two to three times. Sometimes when we get to longer word problems, I read them about three times, especially when I'm going over it. The first time to get an idea of what's happening. 52% of all violent felons in the prison system are repeat offenders. If 48 violent felons are randomly selected, find the probability that. So I'm given some information, I'm given a probability, I'm given a value here for a sample size, and I'm looking for other probabilities. So I would, just based on what I'm given, think about binomial and verify if it's binomial, just based on what I'm given. Um, so the second time I read it, I'm pulling out the information. Um, 48 violent felons are randomly selected. That's my sample size. That's my, you know, fixed number of trials for my binomial. So N is 48. So now I'm converting it into mathematical notation, right? Um, I have two outcomes. I'm going to put S as success and F as failure. Remember that success is not necessarily the better situation. It's just the situation you're calculating the probability for. Failure is the complement of that. And I, I forgot what number this is. This is, um, I'll look it up after, but it's on your binomial stuff. It's one of the last ones. Um, so success here is, you know, that they are repeat re offenders. Again, not necessarily, we just call it success and, and um, failure just based on the fact that there are two outcomes. It has to be two outcomes to be binomial, right? Binomial, two outcomes. Failure is, you know, not repeat offender even though, you know, that sounds better, right? Um, so again, success is not necessarily a better situation. It's just what we're calculating probability for. So there's no, it's just, it is what it is. Um, so there are two outcomes. I have a fixed number of trials. So therefore binomial is, is the re binomial requirements are being met. I wanna make sure the events are, are independent, which means the probability of, or, you know, this, this guy over here, because I'm randomly selecting them, this felon over here repeating um, his offend, well, being a re repeat offender should not affect this guy over here repeating his offense. And I would say that that would be true. They should not affect each other because it's random. They're not necessarily coming from the same prison. They might not be friends, right? They're randomly selected. So they should be independent. Hopefully that helps with also understanding what independent means, right? This guy being a repeat offender is not affecting this guy being a repeat offender because they're randomly selected. But if they're homies, right, if they are friends and they obviously did their stuff together, then they would be dependent, right, situation. But for binomial probability distribution, we want them to be independent. And because I'm randomly selecting these guys, they are independent, right? They're independent events, which is good because I need that for binomial. And then the probability of success is the same per situation. And 52% of all violent felons are repeat offenders. Repeat offender is my success here. <laughs> and so, yeah, so because they're independent, the probability that this guy's a repeat offender should be the same as the probability of this guy being a repeat offender, considering that this is the probability for all. So my small p in binomial is 0.52. And then my small q, which is the probability of failure, is the complement of that, which is 0.48, okay? So I read it the first time to get an idea of what's happening. I read it the second time to pull some information out. I, I started to convert the words into mathematical notation, right? The third time is verification. 
52% of all violent felons in the prison system are repeat offenders. So my probability of success is 0.52. Q is used when you do the formula, not necessarily when you do the calculator, but I want to start, you know, I want to remind you what it is because you're going to see it later. It's always the complement of P. So if I have P, I have Q. It's one minus P. 48 violent felons are randomly selected. That's my sample size, fixed number of trials. Find the probability that. Okay, so first time I read it, get an idea. Second time I read it, I'm pulling stuff out. All the givens, convert it to my mathematical notation that I know. Third time, verification. Fourth time if I need it, which, you know, you might be reading some of these word problems later on four time. Because I'm sorry, but they're gonna, you're gonna see word problems later on. We wanna get used to them. So I'm gonna make up some problems. Some of them will be like similar to what is on the assignment, but I wanna cover like all kinds of scenarios. So this is what I wanna do today. So I have a binomial situation. I define my variables. Now I wanna find the probability that exactly 30, um, violent felon are repeat offenders. Okay. I could make that a little smaller and you guys. Can see. Okay. So this is the first question. Here's the situation. Find this probability. So I know it's binomial and I hear, let me just check the chat. Okay, good. And I hear exactly. So remember that when you deal with binomial, there's a variable called X which x is the number of successes in your n trials successes defined to be repeat offenders x is my 30 in this case out of the 48 so i want the probability that 30 out of the 48 are repeat offenders so i want p of 30. and i told you guys yesterday that when you want the probability of exactly this many successes in this many trials binompedia okay Binompedia, if I'm doing the calculator trick. And, and then it's always in the order of N, which is 48, P, which is 0.52, and then X, which in this case is 30. So I'm gonna do it on the calculator. <clears throat> and you find binome PDF on top of ours, so distribution. You're gonna use distribution next week too, by the way. So this button is gonna be your friend for a couple of weeks. So second, bars distribution right um you'll see this stuff next week <laughs> scroll down <laughs> i'm not using that now binome pdf because i want exactly pdf it asks me for trials which we determined was 48 it asks me for small p which we determined probability of success was 0.52 it asks for the x value directly which we determined was 30 successes out of those n trials this is what it looks like, right? Always NPX. Typically we're rounding to four, right? As our final conclusion, 0 0.0404. So approximately 0 0.0404. So there's about a 4% chance that exactly 30 violent felons are repeat offenders out of the 48, which 4% we say, anything under 5% is we, is we say unlikely. So this might be an unlikely event. It's getting close to 5%, but it's, it's, um, still greater than zero. So far so good. I don't see anything in the chat. So second case, find the probability that exactly 10 violent felons are repeat offenders. So I'm going, all right, cool. I have a binomial. They're asking me another exactly situation. So when I see exactly, I'm automatically thinking binome PDF. I want the probability of 10 this time. So binome, and I'm writing this for your notes. And maybe you should too, when you guys are doing your homework, because you might have to refer back to this, right? Binome PDF. And then again, it's always N, which is not changing because it's the same situation, but X is changing because now I want a different number of successes. So binomial PDF, again, second, bars, and I press second and then bars because I want distribution. 
and I want to go down to the binomial distribution. Binomial PDF. CDF is different. PDF for the exactly. And I already have 48 trials. I already put the probability of success. I want the X value now to be 10. That's the only thing that's changing because I'm on the same problem. Enter. And I got, okay, perfect. Here we go again. This little E thing. I expected this to be small because this was so small. So I expected this to be really small. And when you see something like this, sorry, in your graphing calculator, the probability is not 7.29. Your probability should never be greater than 1. This E negative 6 is extremely important. So this is saying 7. Point, I'm going to take 2916. I'll take 2916. E, I'm going to write this for your notes, negative 6. This is the graphing calculator's way of saying scientific notation times 10 to the negative 6. And whenever you use scientific notation, this negative exponent on that 10 tells me to move the decimal to the left. It makes it a smaller number. So one, two, three, four, five, six. Zero, 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 seven, two, six. This is the probability. Extremely unlikely. Extremely unlikely. I might imagine that, you know, a lot of them are going to be. Anyway. <laughs> Just for practice and just for the heck of it, I might be like, all right, how about 40 of them going to be repeat uh, offenders? Is that probability going to increase? Because look, going from 10 to 30 is going up. So if I continue to go up, it looks like that probability is probably going to increase. Now, that would just be an experiment for fun, but I'm going to um, move on to something else that I want to talk about here. So any questions so far? Look at this. My computer is delayed. <clears throat> Make sense? Now here's the part that I want to really go into detail. Because the exactly, obviously, eh, not a big deal. Anytime I hear exactly, binomial PDF. But now, I could say less than, greater than, between, any number that I want. So we have to get used to that. So whenever you hear the less than, the greater than, the, the less than or equal to, the greater than or equal to, you have to determine what is being spoken about before you try to do a, you know, any, any like trick to simplify your calculation. I'm going to show you what I mean. So let's start with less than. Less than. So out of the 48, what's the probability of less than 20? Our repeat offenders. Okay. So now let's go pink. <laughs> I'll change my color. Less than 20. So you're not seeing exactly. I'm not sure if that's what makes it confusing too because now it's a less than. It's not exactly. I'm not using PDF. But what does less than mean? It means smaller than 20. Am I including 20? No. I'm less than 20. So if I'm less than 20, I'm everything smaller. I'm just smaller than 20, right? And so I like to tell my students to write it out. Anything smaller than 20 out of the 48. So that's including zero. That's including one. These are all the possible scenarios. That's including two. You don't have to write, obviously, all. And that's including 19. It's up to 19. It's not including 20. But it's including the sum of everything less than 20. All the possible outcomes that are less than 20. And this represents each one of these. This one represents the probability of exactly zero out of 20. Uh, sorry, 0 out of 48. This one represents the probability of exactly 1 out of 48 being a repeat offender. This one represents the probability of exactly 2 out of 48 being a repeat. And those are all part of, this is, this is a discrete probability distribution. These are all discrete outcomes. The reason that you have to add all these up is because of the fact that if I talk about 2 out of the 48 being repeat offenders, those 2 can be in any order. I have to consider the order in which those two are being repeated. So 48 people are lined up in front of me, um, 48 violent felons are lined up in front of me, and I'm talking about two of them being repeat offenders. It could be the first two, the middle two, the last two, this two, uh, whatever. This is including all those different combinations of possible cases. So doing this by hand is going to be a pain in the butt, which is why binomial helps simplify that. But even the formula for binomial can be simplified with the calculated tricks. Does that make sense? Hold on, I'm grabbing my charger here. <clears throat> 
So I have to include all those. So it's like saying, I hope that charging. I hear you. Go away now. Okay. Maybe this will stop tripping in a second. Um, it's like saying, um, sorry about that. It's like saying the probability that exactly zero out of the 48 are of repeat offenders or the probability exactly one out of 48 are repeat offenders or two are repeat offenders or, right? The plus is like the or case because we're adding up all these different possible outcomes. So, um, yeah, <clears throat> if I were doing this, you know, with the binomial PDF, then I'd have to do binomial PDF for this plus, binomial PDF for that plus, binomial PDF for that plus, and that's a pain in the butt too. So binomial CDF, and I had the notes in I think yesterday's stuff, but binomial CDF allows me to add a a bunch of different um, binomial, obviously, outcomes, starting at zero. And I, <clears throat> when I think about CDF, I always think about cumulative because cumulative is an addition, it's a sum. And that's what this is, cumulative. It's adding up the stuff. But it's only adding up starting at zero. I'm not using binomial CDF it's, if it's not the sum from zero up until whatever number. And it has to be in order, increasing by one. Otherwise, it's not going to be right. <clears throat> I think I'm losing my voice. Does that make sense? Since I have not heard anything or seen anything, I'm assuming we're good so far. And <clears throat> P is point, <clears throat> my voice is 0.52 and then X. Now, when I'm doing binomial CDF, X, X is always the last value in your sum, okay? That's how you input your X. So if I put binomial CDF, and I put 19 here, that means that the calculator is going to calculate P of 0 plus P of 1 plus P of 2 all the way to 19. Okay, understand what your CDF is doing because you're going to use it to make um, other calculations easier. However, you have to understand what it's doing because otherwise, um, um, you know, you can make error. So it's not just a sum, it's a particular sum from 0. So binom CDF is the same place as binom PDF, second var, second bars because I want to pull up distribution and then I'm going to go to binomial CDF cumulative now okay and it's going to ask me the same thing so you know this here is not indicating that, that there's a sum the only way that you're going to know that you're indicating a sum is CDF versus P so you pay attention right pay attention so I have 48 trials I have probability of success is 0.52 and then I have X value, which is the last one that I want to add in there in the 19. Scroll down, enter pace, and then enter again, 0 0.0572, <clears throat> approximately. 0 0.0572. So the probability that less than 20 of them are repeat offenders is about 5.72%. Now, the reason that this is higher than this is because this is including all of these possible outcomes added up all together. And this, exactly 30, is only talking about P of 30. So this is a sum of a bunch of different outcomes. All right. So far, so good. While I make up the next one. Oopsies. Okay. Let's do a more than. Because I can come up. More than, less than, I don't know. More than, let's do more than 30. Cause I'm thinking this might be larger. <clears throat> okay, so I'm gonna, say, I'm gonna say the same thing again. Anytime you know your binomial situation and then you talk about this less than, this more than, this whatever, this between, you wanna write the outcomes that represent that situation. Now more than 30 is not including 30. It's everything bigger, right? So I'm gonna say bigger than 30. It's not including 30, right? It's more than 30. So if I were to write that out, that's more than 30 um, repeat offenders out of the 48 again, okay? So more than 30. So that's the 31. 
or the 32 or the 33. Now I'm not going to write it all, but this is just for me to understand what I'm doing, right? And it's including the 48 because it's all the way up to 48. It's more than 30, but obviously I can't go past 48 because I'm only sampling 48, right? That's including all of this, right? Not including 30 because it's more than. So I go, all right, cool. I understand what I'm doing here, but the problem is I don't like it because <laughs> I can't necessarily go straight to binome CDF because it's not starting at zero. Yeah, it's a sum. I want to add stuff up. I don't know why my computer is like slower than me right now. Come on, computer. Do your thing. Look at this. What is that? I probably have too many things running. I'm going to have to fix that. All right. I'm not going to be. So <laughs> um, I'm not starting at zero. I can't go straight to binome CDF. Binome CDF has to start at zero. So I have to figure something out here. Something got to do something here. Now, this is where the concept of complementary events helps my calculation because the complement of more than 30, right, where I'm only out of 48, the complement of more than 30 would be everything less than, well, 31, right? So P of zero, P of one, okay. P of two, and this would stop, the complement would stop at 30. Because if I look at the two of these, all these green, plus all of these black, they add up to all the possible outcomes. If I have 48 randomly selected um, felon. But I can't necessarily just add these up. I have to remember to take the complement and always subtract it from one. Because otherwise, I'm going to only have this sum, which is not equivalent to this. However, the problem the, the, this sum then subtracted from one is equivalent to this because right if we talk about the total sample space the sum of all the possible outcomes and their corresponding probabilities it should add up to one and technically it's kind of like this the sum of all the possible outcomes and their corresponding probabilities should add up to a probability total of one that's kind of what that is this is just obviously not a table because i'm not writing 48 different outcomes right so i can do one minus the binome cdf here my n is 48 my p is 0.52 and the x that i use 0.52 and the x that i use here is 30 because i want to do one minus this sum to get this sum so i can directly plug it into my calculator i can go one minus I don't want to forget the one though, minus second bars down to binome CDF, enter. Same stuff, right? The only thing I need to change is this guy 30. So what you have to be careful with, let me uh, write this down, 0 0.0539, approximately 0 0.0539. What you have to be careful with, and I'm, I hope that wasn't extremely distracting. I forgot to shut that off. I have my little air filter in here. What you have to be careful with when you're doing binome CDF, because you're playing around with either directly binome CDF or the complement, is you have to be careful of the X value. Obviously, you know, that's, that's very important because it will change your, your overall calculation. Binome CDF is doing a sum. If I put, you know, 31 here, is gonna give me something completely different than putting 30 here. So you have to be careful as to what this is telling. This is why I say, take what the question asks and write out what it means, and then think about what's the fastest way to deal with that. Do I go straight to like binome CDF or do I need to like do complementary events to figure out, you know, um, you know how to calculate that the, the fastest, most efficient way, right? The situation and, and you know, double check, am I including 30 in this or not. Now, if I'm not including 30 in my calculation that I want, 
If I do use complementary events, then 30 has to be included in the complement. So you have to be careful, right, with that X value, because sometimes you might be including this and sometimes you might not. It all depends on what this is saying. That's why write that part out first and then think about, you know, if you need to use complementary events or not. Here I didn't have to because less than 20 started at zero and went up to 19. But if I went up to 20, this would be incorrect because I'm not including 20. So you have to be careful of that X value, right? Um, so wait, let me do another one. More than, less than, uh, I didn't do between yet. I wanna do a between. Let's go find the probability that between 30 and 40, violent felons are repeat offenders. Now, this is important, you know, I'm just going to do between because you can be including the 30 and the 40 or not. So it is important to determine whether you're including these values or not. Actually, let me just do inclusive for the first example. Maybe I'll do another one after. So it does matter whether you are including the, sorry, I was thinking about putting it on a different page. It does matter if you're including the 30 or the 40. Um, so let's think about this. What does it mean before I actually start trying to figure out how to plug it into the calculator? Let me just interpret. Between 30 and 40 inclusive. Now I'm obviously in the same situation. All the other, it's a binomial, right? All that stuff is cool. But now I have to figure out what between 30 and 40 means. Inclusive. So I'm including the 30 and I'm including the 40 because of the fact that it says inclusive. If it didn't say inclusive, then I would not be including the 30 and the 40. So maybe I'll do that after. So that means that this is saying 30, 31, 32, all the way up to 40 because I'm including 40. So this is what this is saying, between and including, between and including. So this is what I need to figure out how to calculate. Now I could do binomial PDF for each one of these, but that would be maybe a long process. Whatever works for understanding though, right? There is a trick with the binome CDF, but you have to be very careful of your X value. So, all right, I'm gonna write it out. So, I might color coordinate, all right. <laughs> I can't go straight to CDF, even though it's a sum because it's not starting at zero. So I have a problem with that. Okay, that's my first thought process. Can I use CDF? Can I go straight? Nah, I could use PDF for each one of them. I don't wanna do that. Let's see if I can find a faster way. So if I wanna use CDF, let me talk about what this means. Binom CDF where N is 48 and P is 0.52 and X is 40. All right, let's just talk about that. I might have to write this out for your notes. Just so you have it, so you understand, because you want to understand why you're doing certain things, right? You don't want to just do them, you want to understand why, so that you can approach any problem that you're given. <laughs> do you see the delay on my computer? <laughs> okay, look at this, it looks like a little floating. Okay, go back now, okay. <laughs> That's gonna drive me crazy, okay. <laughs> What does it mean if I say binome CDF up to 40? So in my red is the binome CDF up to 40, right? This means in red, P of zero plus P of one all the way to 40, right? That's what the binome, that's what this means. I don't want all the way up to 40. I want it to start at 30, right? So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to take all this and I'm going to subtract something. And what am I going to subtract? Well, I'll subtract it. Let's do green. Um, I want to take away everything up until, you know, everything less than 30, right? Because I want to include 30 in my calculation. So if I can take away all the stuff up until, um, 29, 
that is going to like cross out everything up until 29. And then it's going to start at 30 and go to 40. So technically what I'm doing here is I'm taking binomial CDF 40, the sum all the way up to 40 starting at zero. And I'm going to take away the binomial CDF uh, 48.52. I'm going to take away up to 29. I'm going to take away that because of the fact that I want 30 included in my answer. Now, let me pause for a second, make sure that makes sense. <clears throat> I want you to know that is why we could do the subtraction here. And that is why this is a little bit faster when you're doing the between but you have to obviously be careful of your X values. Or, you know, you have to think about, am I including 40 or not? And what is this guy? Is it gonna be 30? Is it gonna be 29? Which is why I say, write out the situation first to understand what the question is asking and then play around with the calculator tricks to help you make that calculation faster. Because now I can make it faster. I can go straight to second bars, binome CDF, which is this one. And I'm gonna end this at 40, because 40 is included. And I'm gonna subtract from that second vars, the binome CDF, up until 29. Because I don't wanna take away the 30. I wanna take away the 29, I want 30 included. Right, so I have binome P, uh, CDF up to 40 minus binome CDF up until 29, which is going to give me my in between. So 0 0.09, my in between inclusive, 0 0.0943 approximately. So again, you have to be careful of the X values. That's the part that might be confusing when it comes to CDF. You know, that's the part that's confusing. How do you know when to do one minus? How do you know when to do the subtraction? How do you know? Understand why, why are you doing it that way? And then why is the X always changing? Why is it changing? How come I'm not putting 20 here? You know, how do I know when to put 20 here and when to put 19? So write out what makes sense for the situation first and then deal with trying to figure out if you do complementary or if you do something else, what is gonna make it fastest? So like if I had the same question, which I wanna do, but now not inclusive, that's going to change a couple things. Now I just want to be between. So let's interpret that. Between, I'll use the same color coordinator. <laughs> between 30 and 40 is not including 30 and not including 40. It's just in between them. So that's 31, 32, and that stops at 39. It's just everything in between 30 and 40. So now if I'm doing this trick, which I'll write out for your notes in red, I'll do the first. What that means is if I were to take um, the P of zero plus P of one all the way to 39 this time, because I wanna include 39, but I'm not including 40 in this because I want between if I take all that and I subtract from that some stuff to get what's left, what am I subtracting? So I'm gonna subtract the zero stuff because I don't want the zero, I don't want the one. Where do I end? How do I know where to end? I wanna subtract everything, right? I want this to start at 31. So this includes everything less than 39 so i want to start at 31 i want this to i want 30 to be subtracted from that so technically what i'm doing and i'm doing the binome cdf my n is 48 my uh, p is 0.52 my x is 39 for this one and then i will subtract from that the binome cdf the N is 48, the P is 0.52, it is 0.52, right? Okay. <laughs> and the X here is 30. Do you see the difference? Look at this. It's very similar to what we did above. 
But instead of putting 40, I put 39. Instead of putting 29, I put 30. Why did I do that? Because I want between not including those values. How did I determine how to do that? I wrote out my situation first. I saw what the heck it was talking about. This was inclusive. So I want to include 30 and 40. So I have to analyze how to include that. Here, I didn't want to include that. So you see how it's changing my overall value. Um, so determining what that X is, is important. So second bars again, I'll show you how to do this. Um, by no CDF, this one is now stopping at 39. And I want to take that and subtract from that, not add, subtract. Second bars down to binomial CDF again, which is here. I'm subtracting up until what I say 30. Because I want my answer to include 31 and not 30. And that is going to give me 0 .5, 0 0.0539. Approximately 0 0.0539. Look at the change. Very different values, just based on inclusive, just this one word. So you wanna be really careful about how you choose those X values, especially when you're doing binomial CDF, because I know PDF is easy, it's, it is what it is. It's exactly 30, there's your X, it's exactly 10, there's your X, it's the P, it's the CDF that you have to think about what this is gonna be. You know, is it 20 or is it 19? You know, is it 30 or is it, you know, 31? Because I went more than. So interpret what it's asking you and write it out generally before you try to figure out a trick. Understand what it's asking you more than 30. It's not including. Write it out and then figure out a trick. I figured that I have to do one minus for this one because it wasn't including zero. It has to start at zero and go up to be straight binome CDF. See this one. So um, let me stop recording and see if you guys have any questions.